I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise to him that I I will serve him until I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised to him that I, I would serve him until I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I was alone and idle, and I was a sinner too. And I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do. So I took my master's hand and I joined the Christian band. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him until I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. Christ's land I trod, crying sinners come to God. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised to him that I, I would serve him until I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Our scripture for this afternoon will be coming from number one Psalms from the New King James Bible. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinner, nor sits in the seats of the star, star court. but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that bring forth its fruits in its season, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Lord has blessed us and doers of his holy word. May we pray. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, we're trying to have him. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to see another day we've never seen before, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, bless every church that's open in your name, Heavenly Father. Bless every preacher that preaches your name, Heavenly Father. Bless the sick and the shed in Heavenly Father. Bless the ones who lost the loved ones, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, keep your arms around our children as they go to and from, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, you've been so good to us. We had a thousand tons, Heavenly Father. I cannot thank you enough, Heavenly Father. We ask all your blessing, your daughter, son, Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're gathered virtually this week to commemorate and celebrate the 75th annual session of the Salem Baptist District Association, the district that advocates peace. We all know that we're living in some unprecedented times. The pandemic labeled COVID-19 has invaded and impacted all of our lives in one way or another. Our children are senselessly dying in the streets of our city. But here we are. We're virtual, but we're still here. We've had to alter our normal sessions activities, but here we are. Change, brothers and sisters, whether we embrace it or not, has forced itself upon us. Churches have had to limit their gatherings, but thank God that the word of God is still going forth. Our district is still working to be dutiful as we work together. Many members, one body, advancing the kingdom of our God. We're still sounding the trumpet of salvation through faith in a risen and a living Christ. But I thank God today that in the midst of change and in the midst of chaos, there is one constant. God is still our God. God is still our creator. Jesus is still our savior. And the Holy Spirit still guides and comforts us. In spite of it all, I stopped by tonight to let us know God is still in charge. So as moderator of the Salem Baptist District Association, I open this virtual 75th annual session in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Good evening to the moderator, Reverend Dr. Reginald E. Backus and the entire staff. I believe protocol has already been established. I am Deacon Earl Banks of the Friendship Baptist Church, the greatest church on the west side of Chicago. I stand before you to present our speaker, he is a devoted husband to Marjorie and a father. He has been a member of friendship for 63 years, a servant of the Lord, laboring on the battlefield. He is a brother deacon, a man of God, and with integrity. He is a member of the Brotherhood Ministry, the Men's Sunday Church School, the Singing Churchman Choir, and that's not all. Outside of the church, he is an active leader in Baptist General State Congress Convention, Layman Auxiliary, and he serves as the financial director of Illinois Baptist Layman Fellowship. He is a true example of a Christian man. I personally want to thank him for being a blessing to me in the past three years from deaconship training and my past two years as a deacon, this brother deacon has mentored me by giving instructions, sound advice, and corrective criticism, and all in the spirit of love. I appreciate all you have done for me, and I thank you. I also realized, having been worked with, with uh, the deacon and being around him, that you know you 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 get impressions of people, and you may first of all have a, a different opinion of their actions and their the way their ways. But through all of this, I just want to say that the old cliche, "Your bark is not as worse as your bite," and now. I give you 
great pleasure, gives me great pleasure to introduce our Salem District Layman's Auxiliary President, Deacon Alonzo Ware. To God be the glory for the things he has done. To our hosting pastor and moderator, Dr. Reginald E. Backus, his cabinet. Moderator at large, Dr. Stephen J. Dust Thurston. Congress President, Dr. LaRue Kidd and his cabinet. All pastors and preachers present. All auxiliary laymen and to our auxiliary presidents, Reverend Marlon Withers, Associate Ministers, Reverend Marlon Winfrey, Music Auxiliary, Sister Detra Backus, Ministers, Wives, and Widows, Sister Carolyn Parham, Nurses, Sister Lashonda Kidd, Youth, Dr. Cora Sedek, Gore, Women's Auxiliary, Sister Pauline Withers, Ushers, Friendship, Family, each of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and of course, to the love of my life for 43 years, Marjorie, good evening. So once again, I stand before you to give my fifth annual address is Salem District Layman's Auxiliary President. What a great honor. i like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to Deacon Earl Banks for a wonderful introduction. My stewardship report, I encourage as many of the brethren as possible to become a member of the Salem District Layman's Auxiliary. I was a part of each Zoom meeting this past year in the district and the state. I also contribute or honor all requests. This concludes my stewardship report. Let us pray. I have not Father, it's once again that we come before you for our annual session for the Salem District Association. We wish or desire that everything is done decent and in order the way that you would have it done. We wish that you bless each believer. Bless the pastor that leads them. Be with the sick and the shut-in. All these that's in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Baptist, pardon me, Salem Baptist District Association. Many members, one body, working together, advancing God's kingdom. 1 Corinthians 12th chapter, verses 12 through 27. In this passage, we find Paul referring to the church as the human body and the need for many believers exhibiting their spiritual gifts or abilities. We begin with the under shepherd, the pastor, the God sent individual to lead the flock of baptized believers, receiving the visions to guide the people of God. Then we have the people with not only different backgrounds and talents, but abilities and gifts. They are the ministers, deacons, ushers, nurses, Sunday school teachers, musicians, choirs, and a number of other people of God. 
Believers must bear in mind that God has given to each at least one gift to be used as they start their spiritual walk as believers grow God adds to their list of gifts so there should not be any fear of doing the work of spreading the good news for in Exodus 28.3 God fills us with his spirit to not only do the task that's at hand, but have the ability and wisdom to accomplish the mission. We all should be willing to serve, even if it's from behind the scenes, not being jealous of envious of others we think have more gifts than ourselves. All believers have one thing in common, faith in Christ. We are to go out telling the unsaved, lacking spiritual salvation about Jesus Christ and his saving powers. For in Matthews 28, 19 to 20, Jesus instructs all of us to do the following. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the ages. We know that on one Friday, Jesus died, hung on the cross, was buried in a bar tomb where he lay for three days, all day Friday night, all day Saturday. But early on the third day, Sunday morning, got up with all powers in his hands. Thank you and may God bless and keep you. Good evening. God be praised for the privilege of being able to gather and celebrate this the 75th annual session for our great district. To moderator Bacchus, the presiding officer, and each and every one of you, my father's children, I stand this evening to introduce our youth director, a task that is so simple, yet so complicated. Simple because I have known her all her life. I've watched her grow exceptionally in every area of her life. Complicated because there's so much I can share to even give you a glimpse of who she is, what she does, her goals and accomplishments. Over and above this, I know without a shadow of a doubt that she knows the Lord, she loves the Lord, and she has a heart for his people and for service. Salem, I am pleased, I'm proud, and I'm privileged to present my firstborn daughter in whom my husband and I are very well pleased and your youth director, Mrs. LaSandra Campbell. To our moderator, Dr. Backus and his cabinet, to all of the other auxiliary presidents and their cabinets, to my father and pastor, Dr. LaRue Franklin Kidd and the members of True Light Church. And this year for the first time, I'm happy to acknowledge my husband, Pastor Michael Campbell. Greetings to each of you, my brothers and sisters. 
This year has challenged many of us far beyond anything we could have ever imagined. We spent more time at home than away, more time with those we live with and less time with others, more time working from home than commuting, more time communicating digitally than in person, which may have been the biggest challenge for most people. It certainly was a challenge as youth director to keep in touch with our youth. With them all doing remote learning for school, it was quite the challenge to get the youth to log in to Zoom for our monthly sessions. I did keep in touch with them or their parents via phone, text, email, and sometimes even social media. I made sure that they each got a Christmas gift and in partnership with the youth department of the Greater New Era Baptist District Association, we hosted a joint mission project where we sent toiletries, snacks, and letters of encouragement to the young men of the Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice. This was all done remotely and the contributions were shipped directly to the youth center from Amazon. So even though we weren't able to meet in person, we didn't let that stop our mission. We all had to accept that in order for us to someday be able to gather again safely, it required us to spend some time apart. And we are looking to gather together again in person soon. In the meantime, there has been lots and lots of so social media usage just to keep in touch with each other. Not just the youth either. People of all ages all over the world have flooded social media to keep in touch with classmates, coworkers, friends, peers, and loved ones. Social media has been booming during this pandemic. Old platforms such as Facebook and new platforms such as TikTok have all become the new normal as our lives have been inundated with screen time. I gotta admit, I wasted a lot of hours just scrolling through social media. And one thing I noticed while scrolling through social media was the advertising. Some of the advertising was very targeted. For me, it was shoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. I got ads for shoes all of the time. Ads for Nike, Adidas, Allen Edmonds, Taft, Meslin, Angela Scott, that's one of my favorites, all lived on my timeline. It's like, who told you I like buying shoes? Mind your business. Another thing that seemed to be a little bit more targeted than shoes was the advertisements about weight loss. Here I am laughing at funny videos, unwinding from a long day of wearing a mask all the time, living my best life and social media is nagging me constantly about losing weight. With this challenge here and that challenge there, this meal plan here and that meal plan there, or better yet, here's some unsolicited advice on how to appear slimmer with this waist trainer or hide your imperfections with the BBL. Then you turn on the TV and find shows that use overweight people as the butt of the joke on every show and commercials that advertise health and beauty with only the most thin models and the most masculine, muscular men. And it's become the norm for some of us to criticize our own bodies as though it makes us feel connected in some kind of way. Like maybe if we all hate our bodies, it'll be okay. This, my brothers and sisters, this is body shaming. Body shaming, the act or practice of humiliating someone or ourselves by making mocking or critical comments about the body shape or size. 
Body shaming can lead, can lead to a vicious cycle of judgment and criticism. And when we body shame ourselves, it implies that we should want to change and that we should care about looking slimmer and smaller. And if we don't, we just might risk being the target of someone else's body shaming comments. Well, here we are on this side of the pandemic. I say this side because we've come over and through a lot in the past year. The pandemic isn't over just yet, but as we are adjusting to a new normal and as we are walking into our post-pandemic lives and becoming the post-pandemic district, I want to am admonish each of you to acknowledge and identify body shaming. Call it out when you see it. And I'm not talking about thick thighs, jelly rolls, booty doos, all of those things of the physical body. I'm talking about the body shaming of that one body of Christ. Somebody say one body. Paul writes in chapter in the 12th chapter of Corinthians, for by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. And as I see it, body shaming manifests, manifests itself in three ways. One way is by criticizing your own appearance through judgmental comparison to another person. Another way is by criticizing someone else's appearance in front of them. And the third way is to criticize someone else's appearance without them being present. But no matter how it manifests itself, it often leads to comparison and shame, and it perpetuates the idea that we should be judged based on our body type. We must remember that we are not individual bodies, but one body with many members. What does a body look like when the eye is criticizing the ear for not being able to see. Girl, look at that ear over there. He can't even see. All he do is listen, listen, listen. Body shaming. What does a body look like when the foot is criticizing the hand for not being able to walk? Look at that hand over there, always waving at somebody. Don't ever speak, just waving body shaming. We are all collectively the body of Christ. And it doesn't matter if you got knees like Megan, as long as you know to kneel down and pray for the one body of Christ. Instead of body shaming other parts of our one body, we need to make a unified effort to strengthen our contributions to the one body. Each of us plays a vital role. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, makes it very clear as it says, for as, for as the body is one and hath many members, all members of that one body being many are one body. Even though each of us are unique, peculiar even, we all possess gifts that are important to the proper functioning of the one body. First, you have to know your place. If you have accepted Christ into your life as your Lord and personal Savior, you have been placed into the body of Christ. This isn't something you go searching for, but something that is given by God upon your baptism. And it's not something that's ever revoked. Even if you feel like you've been backsliding, all you got to do is slide right back. Since every believer is placed into the one body, it is important for us to know how we fit in. So you have to know your position. The body is made up of believers from all walks of life, young and old, rich and poor, black and white, 
And in some instances, you may find parts of the one body who you have nothing in common with other than the fact that you are both believers. But no matter how diverse the members of the one body are, when everyone is in their proper place and proper position, there is a unified success. It may not be a high profile position, may not even have a title attached to it, but your position is just as critical to the, to the success, to the successful functioning of the body as any other member. Not only do you need to know your place and position with the body, but you also need to know your purpose. Verse 25 of the text says that there should be no schism in the body. I had to look up that word schism. And it means a split or division between parties caused by differences in opinions or beliefs. In other words, each of us has a purpose to promote unity in our one body. If your position is the foot, don't try to do the work of the hand. If your position is the nose, don't try to do the work of the ear. The second part of that same verse says that members should have the same care for one another. We've got to care for each other mutually. When we stop the body shaming, know our place and position and operate in our purpose, we will be one body working together advancing God's kingdom. I have the faith that sees the invisible, expects the incredible, receives the impossible. that can conquer in faith that uproots my problems faith to know God can solve them That can conquer Faith to reach the unreachable. Brothers and sisters, it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce the president of our music ministry auxiliary, none other than the Reverend Marlon Winfrey. Uh, Reverend Marlon Winfrey is uh, a musician on the staff of the Friendship Baptist Church. He's a family man. He's a preacher of the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. He works diligently in our district association work, uh, and we're grateful tonight to have him as a part of this great district association. So let us pray with him and pray for him as he comes with his annual address, sharing with us what God has placed on his heart. Receive with me, if you will, Reverend Marlon Winfrey. Good evening, Salem. 
to Dr. Back as our moderator, to Sister Detra Back as our minister's wives, President Dr. Cora Southern Gore, women's ministry, uh, Dr. LaRue Kidd, our Congress president, Sister Carolyn Parham, our nurses, President Reverend Marlon Withers, our associate ministers, our Deacon Alfonso Ware, our layman, our Sister Pauline Withers, our ushers, Sister Cassandra Kidd, uh, Lysandra Kidd, I'm sorry, our youth president. Good evening. My stewardship report. Due to the outbreak of COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we suspended all of our activities for the music department for the 2020 calendar year. Uh, we followed up with monthly check-ins uh, to keep communications going with the music department. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, the day that we can come back together again and give God the best praise and worship as a music department. So is my stewardship report. Amen. Just want to look at our theme uh, for a few minutes from First Corinthians chapter twelve, verses eleven through twenty-two. I probably won't read all of it, or we'll read a couple of verses just to uh, give us uh, an idea of where we're going. Verse number eleven says, "But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will." For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by the say by the by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit for the body. Verse number 14 says is not one member, but many. Verse number 16 says, and if the ear shall say, because I am not nigh, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Verse number 17 says, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were the hearing, where were the smelling? But now God hath set members, every one of them into the body as it hath pleased him. Verse number 22, and I hope and trust that you will read the rest of the remainder of that. Uh, when you get an opportunity, I guarantee you it will bless you. Uh, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Amen. Just for a few minutes, I want to talk from this subject. Uh, I need you and you need me. Amen. I know that each of us here in the sanctuary and those who are viewing uh, have experienced uh, an empty place in your life. Uh, you also have wondered uh, if you matter and if what you contribute matters. We have been in isolation for more than a year and it has caused us to feel uh, that uh, that we are no longer needed. And the truth is nothing uh, in this life works without unity. Your car, regardless of how much you pray for it, no matter how much gas you put in it, the starter uh, doesn't work. Uh, the starter and the engine, I'm sorry, doesn't work. If the starter doesn't work, the car won't work. Amen. Uh, and so uh, if any components were uh, not in unity with the rest of them, your car would not work. Amen. The Alabama State football team became the national champions because the unity of a record uh, 7.0 uh, to be exact. Uh, everything works because of unity. If, if the players had not come together and played all of the plays that the coach had laid before them, it would not work. Amen. The church, the district, amen, works because of unity. The Bible says a house that is divided shall not stand. Why? Because there is no unity. The word unity means oneness. Amen. For unity to exist, there needs to be oneness. Amen. I, I love the scripture that says it, how good and how, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Like the three musketeers, 
say a one for all and all for one. There must be unit. There must be unity for united we stand, but divided we fall. As I began to recall, Amen, uh, the duties and responsibilities of the music department uh, through uh, through this time through this pandemic, uh, I realized that each one of the members are needed for the music department to be a success. What are you saying? The the director can't be a director if, it, if there's not a musician. Amen. The musician uh, can't play the songs the way they need to be played if they don't follow the direction of the director and if they don't put the music together the way that it needs to be. Uh, so, which which lets me know that 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 Paul Paul sh is Paul shows us that that we need to have. Uh, we, we don't need to change the methods, the message in which we operate. We just need to change the method. And that the message still needs to be carried. So Paul sent me a text uh, on, on, on the way, uh, on the way here. And he said, I need you to be encouraging the people uh, to work as one and not be envious of the gifts of others. He makes it plain so that everyone knows that all the gifts that were needed in the body, even if some people see their gifts as being greater than others. And when we were coming up, they would always tell us that uh, no, no gift is greater than the other. They all work together for the same purpose. I know that, uh, I know that we are a great body of believers all across the city and that we all have various gifts but the truth is we all need each other we are really like the church in Corinth who receive various gifts and if you really tap into what God has given us we will realize that he has given us power amen the issue at hand is instead of using the gifts to magnify and glorify God and edify our brothers and sisters many have become show-offs amen I remember growing up when I when I started playing I thought I was the best thing uh, best thing happening amen and I, I remember uh, one of the choir members had brought me down the side she told me she said when you first started playing she said you were very humble she said you you anytime somebody called you to play you was ready to do it and and what had happened was I I got excited because my gift had begun to take off. I got excited because I could do things that the other musicians couldn't do. But what one thing that that her comment to me made was had it, it had to bring me back down because I realized that I was beginning to show off. They used that and interpreted those languages. I'm talking about in the, in the text. They they used and interpreted. Uh, they use their intellect and intelligence to show their knowledge of being able to speak in other languages and interpret those languages without ever studying for it. Isn't it something? Isn't it how God moves in us and how God uh, will begin to move through us and show us uh, some? There are some things that, Amen. That the, only the power of the Holy Ghost can give you, Amen. Only the power of the Holy Ghost can give you and do that. There's some that you don't even have to pick up a book to do, but hey, you know, Bible says that you are to study to show yourself approved, amen, unto God, amen, so that you'll be able to know what you're talking about when you're talking about what you're talking about. Salem District, there's a danger in using what God has given us in the wrong manner. Uh, 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 we, 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 we have gifts, amen, and we ought to be uh, we ought to be grateful for the gifts that he gives us. Amen. But we ought to use them in the manner and way in which he wants us to use them. We look at uh, in the last uh, verse of chapter 12. Uh, he tells the church that there is a more excellent way to live. And in chapter 13, Paul explains the more excellent way is a living is living a life that emanates out of God's love says new light unless we have love for one another and do the things uh, because of that love then nothing else matters so if you complain about your role in the church in the district the role that Jesus has you fulfilling in his ministry then you you're probably not walking in in love amen it doesn't make sense to complain about what God has given you to do and you're doing it and you you complaining about doing it amen it doesn't make sense to do it amen I'm grateful for what God has given me to do 
Amen. If you are not walking in love, then whatever, uh, whatever it is you like to be doing is fruitless because the love is missing. Amen. Someone, someone said it doesn't make sense to do a job that you're not excited about. They said it don't make sense to be happy about the job that you are doing. So you need to find yourself doing something that you are happy about. Amen. The title of my message is I need you and you need me. Amen. I want you to keep in mind that while we are unique, we are also one. So the first thing I see in this text today is that God is the giver of all gifts. Verse number 11 says, but all these work is that one and the self-same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. Each gift is controlled and produced by the same spirit. And notice, although uh, they are uh, great duplicators and imitators, not everyone has the same gift. Amen. He gives gifts as he wills. When we grasp this concept, this concept, we will eliminate pride and realize that we do not have to do. Uh, that we do not have what we did not receive. If everyone played the same instrument or the same position, there would never be a symphony orchestra, but a monstrosity. If, if everybody played the same note, now I don't know if you pay attention when music is going, amen, but as music is going, amen, there's somebody who's playing the body and there's somebody who's playing the melody. And then there's somebody who's carrying the tune. But if everybody was carrying the tune, amen, that, that it, it would have a different sound. Uh, I, I wish I had time to really play with the sounds and, and really, really uh, dig deep into it. But what I'm really trying to tell you is, is that when God gives gifts, God gives gifts to, to, to who he chooses to give the gifts to. Not only does he give the gifts to whom he choose, but he gives us gifts for specific reasons. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I read that it, it said that uh, he gives some the gift of healing. Amen. He gives some the gift of prophecy. Amen. He gives some the gift of laying. It, it's in a book, y'all. He gives some these different gifts, but but they are not to glorify one another. They are to glorify him. Amen. When, when we when God has called us, amen, to go into the hospitals to pray for uh, one another and go and pray for people. Amen. He's calling us to do a specific work for him. Amen. When people are healed after we go and lay hands, because it is in a book, it, it's in a book. He said, if there are any sick among you, he says, let them call for the elders of the church and let them come. Come on. It's, it's in the text, y'all. He said, but when they get up, because he did say they shall recover. Amen. So I'm grateful tonight that when he gives gifts he knows who he's given a gift to and what reason he's given that gift well I don't want to get caught up in that because I may go over my time so not only is God the giver of all gifts amen but the second thing I see is that the body cannot be separated amen the body cannot cannot be separated verse number 12 tells us it says for as the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ, regardless of how many members uh, the body has. It's one, even though we all perform different functions and duties, we still come. We all come together and function as one body. Amen. I'm reminded of how each church was sing some songs. Amen. With different directors and singers. But when we come together, we sound like one choir. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm aware that uh, they, they do things differently in every church. Amen. But when we come together, amen, we sound like one body. Amen. We don't we don't know how they do it at, at this church. We don't know how they do it at this church. But we know when we come together, amen, we come together and do it as one body. There will be some difficulty in learning another way. But the beauty behind the rehearsing is that we realize that for it to be harmonious and sound, we would have to operate as one body and not that it could be separate. Amen. So it, it just makes sense that when we come together, the Bible says till we come together in a unity. Amen. Unity brings strength. Unity brings peace. Amen. Matter of fact, there's there's strength in unity. Amen. And so not only do we uh, see God uh, is the giver of all gifts, not only 
uh, can a body not be separated? But then the last thing that I see is that each member is needed. Amen. I I I, I want to. I just I just got to take off our moderator and my pastor who who always says I wish I had something a little more profound to say. Amen. But but the one thing I see that everybody each member is needed. Amen. Verses twenty through two through twenty three tells us that nay much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble but they are all necessary and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these we bestow more abundant honor and uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness there are members who may feel that they are not needed because their gifts may not be as attractive as others but the truth of the matter is, is that you are still needed. God knows how to make what you bring to the table work for his glory and to bring honor to his name. He said in his word, he said, for if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So it doesn't matter what you bring to the table as long as what you bring to the table amen glorifies god as long as what you bring to the table amen lifts up the name of jesus god will begin to do what he wants to do and he will get the glory out of it well i'm reminded of a song that that uh hezekiah walker wrote that says i need you to survive and the words of the song are i need you you need me we are all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Now the next part says, I pray for you and you pray for me. Well, what happens when you pray for me? Amen. You can begin to see God begin to move and change some things in your life. So as you pray for me and I pray for you, amen, you start seeing things move. You start seeing things happen. Somebody says, well, why should I pray? Because Jesus said that men ought always to pray and not faint. Amen. Somebody said, when I prayed, it didn't seem like things began to happen well when I prayed amen all you had to do is just sit there just a little while longer and watch God change things amen once you begin to pray amen and wait on God to move I hear the psalmist says wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart but I'm talking about when you are praying amen God will begin to move things in your life it says I pray for you and you pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with the words of my mouth. I need you to survive. And what I'm saying tonight, Salem District, is this is a powerful song because it capitalizes on the concept that no one man or woman is an island, that no member of the district is an island, but here it goes, and no one can stand alone. No man is born alone, and no man dies alone, but we all need each other to make it through this life and into the kingdom of God. We cannot do this thing all by ourselves, but sometimes it may seem as though we are alone. Sometimes it feels as though we are putting every facet of our being into this walk, and nobody else is doing anything. Sometimes you may uh, feel like you're pushing a boulder uphill by yourself sometimes you may feel that uh you may feel uh, that you have to walk all alone but if you want anything done right you've got to do it by yourself well i'm here to tell you tonight that you don't have to do it by yourself because i need you and you need me and how do we do it? we do it with the help of our lord and savior jesus christ who came down here through 40 and two generations who Who showed us? Amen. Who showed us? He showed us. He showed us that 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 we needed each other. Amen. Amen. And somebody said, well, he now he don't need us. Amen. But I'm glad that he chose us. Amen. And so today, today I, I chose this day who I was going to serve. Amen. I was going to serve the Lord. And so what am I saying tonight? Salem, I'm saying tonight. Amen. Amen. That we need each other to survive. God bless you. There may be someone that was listening on tonight there may be someone 
who is trying to figure out where they belong. Jesus died that you might live. If you're wondering if you can be a part of a body, why not be a part of his body? There are many bodies on the streets that are serving in gangs and there are many people doing this and doing that. But the greatest body that you can be a part of is the body of Christ. So we want to extend the invitation to you on tonight that if you heard Jesus calling your name, if you believe that he's your Lord and Savior, if you know that you're in a bad situation and you need somebody to help you out, you found him in Jesus. We want to extend the invitation to you on tonight that you can come to Christ just as you are. He does not look at you and 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 want and want you to be ashamed of who you are, but he simply wants you to come and seek forgiveness and let him know that you need him. Let him know that you can't do it without him. If you are wondering how you can do that, just say this simple prayer. Lord, I'm messed up. I've made my mistakes. I need your help. I know you are who you said you are. I know it, and I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and I ask you to come into my life. Bless me, keep me, and guide me in Jesus' name. If you say that prayer, then you are saved. We can help you find a local church. There are many here in Salem District. All you have to do is to give us a call, and we will help you to find a church. God bless you, and amen. Amen. If you've been blessed by our service tonight and your, the Lord has touched your heart to give on tonight to be a blessing to these co-laborers in the ministry, we ask that you would bless them. The layman is a Deacon Alfonso Ware. You can mail your offering to 7009 West Armitage Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60707. Again, that's Deacon Alfonso Ware. 7009 West Armitage Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60707. Or you can uh, want to bless our youth director, LaShondra Kid Campbell. She's just recently married. You can uh, use her cash app, which is LaShondra Campbell. Or if you want to be a blessing to our music department, Reverend Marlon Winfrey, you can use this cash app as Elder M-A-W. Again, that's Elder M-A-W. We will have all this posted on the screen for Deacon Alfonso Ware, for Lysandra Kid Campbell, as well as Reverend Marlon Winfrey. God bless you. All right. Thank you again for joining in with us tonight for our first night of the 75th um, annual session. Looking forward to seeing you on tomorrow night. We ask that you invite others to come and join in with us as we continue to go forward and to go higher in this week's um, meetings. We pray that God will keep you and bless you as we leave this place. God bless you and may God smile upon you. Amen.